Welcome back into our Huskers Radio Network podcast. I'm Jessica, Jessica Cootie, and we've got a Corn Husker conversation for you today presented by teammates, the third ranked wrestler at 184 pounds, sophomore Lenny Pinto, having a great season for Husker Wrestling. Lenny, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. We uh, talked to several of your teammates over the last year, but you were one we, we hadn't gotten in studio, so we're glad to kind of get to know you. And um, it's uh, been fun watching you so, so you. far over these last couple of years. But I, I wanted to start at the beginning, your recruiting process. How did you land on Nebraska? So um, back to the beginning, what happened? So my coach grew up in Easton, my um, high school coach. And Doc Snyder, our um, head assistant coach, also went to Easton. Uh -huh. So um, there was already like an um, initial connection. And one day um, I had called coach just to get in contact with them because uh, just being from the area, he just wanted to get in touch with me. So I gave him a call and we just started talking. And nothing even about school at all. It was just kind of like, what's up? Like, how you doing? Just like a, um, like a uh, introduction kind of. And then I got to know him. He just told me like a little bit about himself and just that he was impressed with my wrestling and that um, he just thought it was cool that we were from the same area. And then he mentioned Mike, obviously, about how Mike went out there from the East Coast and he loved it out here and just a cool environment and really just like a getting to know each other kind of thing. And then not until like my official visit and then my home visit did we actually like get deeper into it. But I remember when I first made the call to him because uh, my high school coach told me to call him. And I, I went back to history class, I think it was in high school, and I was like, yo, Nick, bro, like I just called up like, but like on Nebraska, I was like, I mean, I probably won't go there, but like that was cool. And like, <laughs> so that was just like a funny like beginning to it. But because like, because at first, like, I didn't think I was going to end up here, but. So what, how'd you end up here then? So I took my official visit and uh, they just gave me a tour of everything. And like, I met the team and I would say Coach Manning and Coach Snyder were for sure like the two components of like mm -hmm. why I came here just because they were so genuine and like, just, um, just like really heartfelt, you know, and like really interested in like my well-being after college and during college and not just like come to school help us like have a better team like it wasn't just about that it was about like bringing me here to find growth get a good education and then be successful like after college so I thought that was cool that they really cared about that and not just like the whole wrestling factor love that you were a state champion in the state of Pennsylvania but how how did you get into wrestling in the first place so I got I uh, grew up with two older brothers Paulie and David and uh well, David's 10 years older, Paulie's five years older, and I got two sisters too, Gabrielle and Maria, and they all did sports, and I was a baby of five, so I mean, they played football, they wrestled, and then eventually, like, I was just a rough kid, and they were like, well, like, let's get him into wrestling too, because my brothers were already doing it, and, uh, you know, I was just, like, I was just big into, like, horseplay, like, my brothers and stuff, just always fighting around the house, and then once I got into wrestling, um, like, once I started getting kind of good at it, like, I started to enjoy it, and then... I don't know, it was just like one thing led to another and I ended up like just like being pretty good as a kid from just being rougher than like the other guys. <laughs> and then I just fell in love with it and then very shortly into my career at like seven years old, like six years old, I was already doing like club practices with like high intensity and like traveling all around the country at like a really young age. So just being into it like that deep at such a young age kind of just carried on. So being that you're the baby and, and you had such athletic family, is that did that drive your competitiveness and oh for sure and the athlete yeah. that you are today yeah for sure like my brothers and stuff just i don't know just trying to be like the best that i could be you know does it probably help too like hey i'm not really scared of anybody because yeah, i no. i grew up matching up against no. the, the older brothers all the time yeah and no, yeah no i was definitely not scared of nobody at my young age for <laughs> sure it's awesome well you came here and and last year you had the injury and then you came here and, and sat out and then made a huge splash last year Coach Manning had talked about how a, a lot of maybe what you worked on between last year and this year was the mental part of it. Yeah. How much was that an adjustment for you coming from where you came from in high school and, and just learning the collegiate part of it and the mental part of wrestling? Um, I would say the mental part wasn't too much of like a switch up for me, honestly, just because of like the competitive factor that I had in high school and like just traveling all around and like doing big time tournaments and stuff like that and just being like really in depth in it already. Like, I was already competing on high stages and, like, in high-pressure moments. Like, I kind of knew what it was like. But, like, obviously, like, there was a slight change because it's just a bigger field, like, a bigger um, stage. So, I mean, wrestling in the Big Ten, like, like the whole toughest conference in the country for wrestling, um, I definitely had to, like, prepare myself that there was going to be a lot bigger moments than I ever lived before. So, like, I was as prepared, like, as much as I could be. But, obviously, I just had to go with the flow and just, like, I just had to 
just adjust like as as time went on because uh, you can't really prepare for something so big without being in that moment yet, you know? Yeah. Coach is saying that you, you had a bad taste left in your mouth after the, the NCAAs last year. Yeah, yeah. How did that fuel you? How, what were some of the things that you closed last season and thought, okay, I got to work on going into this season? Um, so last season, you know, I was a lot more of a gunslinger and like, I might still be so, but I think I wrestle a lot more, um, a lot more, how do I put this? Or like, like a lot more like mature yeah. at this stage. Like I, I, um, I take, uh, I take responsibility of like keeping like strong discipline in like all the small moments. Like I try to stay in good position for seven minutes. I try to stay disciplined, like just stay in the right position. And uh, yeah, like I just try not to be too like wild and flanky, you know? I like that term gunslinger because yeah. it's kind of, it's a perfect way to describe it. Where does that style come from for you? I mean, because it is, it's exciting though. Fans like to yeah. watch that type of style well, I mean, and fireworks. I mean, I just, I guess like from young, like I just mm -hmm. like, so like my first big move ever was a headlock. And like I loved it because it was like, you know, like you grab the guy, you throw him and then match is over if like you get the pin. And I just fell in love with that. Like what if I could hit a big move and then end the match and just get off the mat early. So I just kept trying to do that kind of stuff through high school. And then I got into freestyle a little bit. And then, I don't know, I just found the love for throwing people. That was something I really enjoyed. Oh, uh, that's incredible. So it's more so been about balancing like when to go all gunslinger mode and when to balance maybe being more refined in your yeah, wrestling. Yeah, really picking and choosing like when to do it, you know, because in college, like at this level, you can't just throw out big moves and expect every single one to work. Right. And like if you make a small mistake, like these guys are going to capitalize on it. So like it's really important to make the right decision, like the smart decision and not make any dumb decisions out here because, because it'll catch you. For so, sure. so I saw a cool picture. You had won a state title for your, your high school back in Pennsylvania. And you and I think a teammate, high school teammate, were riding into the town on the fire truck. Oh, yeah, me, yeah. Tell us about that story and, and just kind of what that meant to your, your hometown. Oh, that was, I mean, it was a really, really cool experience. Um, so Jake Jacobson was the first state champion ever out of my high school in my whole town. And um, that was a big thing, like, in itself. So when me and my buddy Patrick did it, uh, he took second that year. And... Um, it was this really cool experience because like we had our friends and family there waiting for us and like just on top of the fire truck it just felt like a whole circle kind of moment you know <laughs> like a hard, just like a lot of hard work and uh being a pa state champ is kind of something that like a lot of guys like dream of like at, at like a young age like they don't like that's like the first big thing that like they want to do is like win pa states and just having that moment for me was just big because i was chasing it for a while what went into that to finally getting that accomplished Oh, you know, just believing in the process, um, just like staying true to my training and staying confident and having a mentality of one match at a time and that nobody was that far ahead of me and that someone's going to win it, so why not be me, you know? Yeah, I love that. So you had, the, you had an injury and then you had an injury here. First of all, what did it mean to you that this coaching staff stuck with you um, through the recruiting process, even despite the injury, that they still wanted to, to have you come here and be a Cornhusker? Uh, it meant a lot. It showed that they had a lot of trust in me and like a lot of faith. And um, just the fact that they had that confidence in me honestly gave me more confidence because, you know, after a year of not wrestling and, like, having ACL and then coming to school here for only four months, like, while I was here and I tweaked it a few times and then the doc told me I had a fully blown torn ACL. And they were immediately, like, supportive. Like, they got me into surgery five days later. And um, our trainer, Tyler Wieda, you know, he's the best in the business. And just nonstop support. And, like, there was times during my... Um, like my recovery process where I was like, cause I think that's the toughest part is like going through rehab and going through recovery and like the mentality part of it. Cause like there was times when I was like, you know, like what if I'm not the same wrestler I was when I used to be cause it was two years prior and just all these like negative thoughts. But having them by my side really helped keep my thoughts up and my positivity. Yeah, I was gonna say, how, how hard is that, that process? And what were some of the biggest things you learned having to fight through it? It's definitely tough. Um, I think something I learned was trusting the people around you that have the knowledge and the experience of what you're going through because I didn't have the knowledge and they did so I just trusted them and kept my faith in them and uh, I think discipline with doing the things you're supposed to do and not skipping days because I know a lot of people that go through rehab for injuries and like they don't have the best rehab and they only do it maybe two three times a week and like and then like the whole recovery process gets extended and maybe it doesn't work as well but for me I was going seven days a week just working on flexibility and just doing something every single day to like work on my knee and I just felt the progress coming along quick. So I think like, just like staying to a tight regiment really helps. 
So last year when you start making waves and, and you start catching people's attention, uh, how fun was it for you to be in front of Husker Nation here inside Devaney and, and hear those loud, loud cheers? It was awesome. It was very welcoming. Uh, it showed that I had a strong support system like I did back home, so it just made this place feel like a little bit more like home. And uh, it was a big growth experience for me because I didn't wrestle in like two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like I was just like coming back into the field of things, you know, and I was proving to myself really that I still had it and that I still got all the abilities that I used to have. So it was really encouraging for me, honestly. You know, we've talked to, forward. yeah, we, we've talked to a lot of your, your teammates and it seems like a really close group. Yeah. But they're a lot older than you, yeah. especially last year's team. And so how has that been for you being one of the younger guys in the lineup the last couple of years and how have they helped you along? Um, so I could say that it has been different, but also like really not like a difference at all because like you said, like it's definitely like a little bit more of a family, well, like a lot more of a family oriented team than just like teammates. And uh, them being older, the only difference is that they have the experience. And like whether I'm going through something or like I'm going through new challenges, like they always got some word of advice and something to help me go through it. But as far as like what was like being younger, like on like an older team, like really no difference because like they, like they just welcome us all like, like we're all the same age, you know? Like no one gets treated different because they're younger or because they're older. Like everyone just comes together and we just, I don't know, we just make it work. Like... Yeah, it's a close-knit group, the, yeah. for sure, you, you can tell. So there's this funny video that was posted on Big Ten Wrestling that the question was asked, most likely, oh, yeah, who is yeah. the most likely to forget something uh, for a road trip? And you overwhelmingly won that. I think you yes. even voted for yourself. Overwhelming. yeah. Tell us about that. Are you just, you're forgetful or what? Uh, yeah, I am very forgetful. Um, <laughs> I used to have like, a lot of sleepovers at my friend's house and stuff. And like I was young and my mom would always tell me, don't forget this, make sure you got this when you leave. She would text me like, like grab this, grab that. And... Sure enough, it stuck with me, and I still forget <laughs> stuff. And even after that, um, like, that thing was posted, I forgot another Yeti in the airport. <laughs> I forgot something in Wisconsin. Like, it's just a big mess. Oh, and actually, going back home from Wisconsin in, in the airport, I left my wallet in, like, the rental car. So everyone got to the airport, and I had to go back to, like, the rental car station, grab my wallet. It was a whole mess. But oh my gosh. that's just part of my identity, I guess, at this point. You just got to laugh about it, right? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I mean, uh, hopefully I could change in the future, but... <laughs> yeah. I don't, know how you, I don't know how you do that if it's, it's always been a part of you. Yeah. Um, one of the cool storylines for this Husker wrestling this season has been the addition of Nash Hopmaker over the month of January. What was your perspective of him coming into the wrestling room and what he's been able to do for the team so far? So my perspective was like, well, this is going to be interesting, you know? I mean, he had a high school record of 166-0, and I think. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this dude's obviously got some skill, but I've never seen him wrestle. And then... First time I saw him in person, I was like, you know, that's a big dude. I was like, I was like, a lot of guys are gonna have trouble like trying to wrestle this dude because just because of pure size. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I had faith in him. I mean, 166-0 in record, like I don't know how you don't, you know. So I mean, I was expecting big things, and and he's he's definitely doing it. He's doing everything I thought he was gonna do. For those that are listening that might not understand wrestling and, and the process, how impressive was it how quickly he dropped the weight and how, re how quickly he was able to come in and he got a pin in his first match? Um, it was really impressive, but also, like, you know, kind of likely because coming out of football season, obviously heavy, he's mm -hmm. putting on weight. And coming into a wrestling room when you're wrestling seven days a week, like, like the weight's going to come off you, like, pretty darn quick. But it was still impressive because, I mean, he dropped about 40 pounds in, like, two weeks, which was just absurd but yeah definitely crazy how has he fit in just to the camaraderie and the team part of things for you guys it's been great he already like it's like he's been here for the whole year already or like the past huh. three years like he's friendly with everybody he always has a smile on he just he fits in well that's cool so you guys um are quickly approaching the end of the season you got i think four duels left yeah. before you go to big tens as as we move to february what kind of goes into these next four duels these, this next month before you guys do have the Big Ten championships? So going into this next month, you know, with um, four duel meets left, it's really like dialing in. Mm -hmm. um, any minor mistakes that like we've been making over the season, this is the time to correct it because like dual season and preseason, like that's the time to make the mistakes. But right now is the time when like these mistakes really shouldn't be happening no more. And uh, it's about getting a lot of that extra work in, you know, because we still have almost a month until – Big Ten, so there's still a lot that you could do to like improve yourself, and mentality would be the biggest thing I would say. Honestly, just locking in, um, building that confidence in yourself, and setting goals that you're gonna try to approach. You know, how hard is it wrestling in the Big Ten week in and week out? It's tough. It really is. Like every single week um, after a match, I come back 
the wrestling room, I'm like, dang, I just feel like I went through a war. <laughs> and like, it's just like nonstop, like the stress of competing against another high level opponent, coming back to recover, getting uh, like a few days of training in and then right back to it. So, I mean, it's just a process that you got to get used to and it takes a little bit of adjusting, but. Talked earlier about how Coach Manning said that you were, had a bad taste left in your mouth from NCAs. How much has that fueled you? How much, how motivated are you going into postseason, Big Tens this season? I uh, definitely left a bad taste in my mouth because, you know, there was guys up there on that podium that I had beaten and that, and there was other guys that I had the potential to beat that I actually lost to. And, um, you know, it's just not a good feeling losing when, like, you know, you could have done more or could have had a different outcome because of minor mistakes. And um, it definitely fueled me a lot because I've, I've already made those changes and I'm still continuing to making changes. And a uh, mindset difference from Coach Manning's perspective is, um, like, there's never a reason to wake up and be like, well, I'll just do it next year, like, because I'm young, like, it'll just be easier next year because I'll be older or senior year, like, I'll go win a national title. It's just like, why not now, you know? Yeah. It's like, you got everything it takes. You have all the skills, the abilities, like, like the mindset, like, why not now? So that's just, like, what I've been working on a lot is, like, why can't I just put the same effort now that most guys would senior year, you know? Yeah, so what are you kind of, all that being said, trying to do over this next month to make sure you're ready for a postseason run? Um, um, positive self-talk is a big thing, you know, just, just reminding myself that I've done these things before, I could do it again. Um, just dialing in on, you know, staying in good position for seven minutes because going through a hard match, like it, it's pretty easy to come out of position a few times, but those few times are... Like what are like are what going to cost you a match? So just being able to wrestle a full solid seven minutes of good position and yeah. Hey, Lenny Pinto, thank you Absolutely. so much for being here with thank us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. This has been a Cornhusker conversation presented by Teammates Mentoring Program. Be there for a student in your local community by going to teammates.org. Make sure you subscribe and like wherever you listen to never miss an episode right here on the Huskers Radio Network podcast.